We want to start off with a reminder that we are not doctors. Before you make any changes or try something new, always consult with your doctor and medical team first. Chronic illness can vary from patient to patient, so it's always best to consult with your own doctor for what is best for you. Hello and welcome to IBD Determined. I'm your host, Mason Harvey, and I speak from the role of a patient, and I have Crohn's disease. And I'm your other host, Michelle Harvey. And I'm Mason's mom, and I speak in the role of a caregiver. And today we are going to revisit a topic we have already, you know, talked about a few times, probably in different episodes. Um, you know, but I think it's important to come back to this because some of you are new listeners. And I think also it's been a year since, you know, we've started this show a over a year now. And so things have we've learned things over and the course of yeah. a year too. So known. yeah. So it's like, hey, let's talk about it again because we may surprise ourselves and know mm -hmm. something that we didn't, didn't know, know before. Back then, yeah. yeah. Be able when to offer that started. advice. Cause every time with this disease, time is like that's how you learn. And mm -hmm. everything seems like in the beginning, like it's so much. And then all of a sudden you feel like you're a medical expert after a little while because you have you gone through expert, this journey. Yeah, so yeah. And you're not so right. Very, yeah. Right. Just feel like yeah. one, but you you're not. Like yeah. And so, you know, you go through all these different phases and it's different for like what Mason has experienced versus even what I've experienced as a parent and as a caregiver. So we're going to kind of talk about from his diagnosis till now, you know, just to help you out there who've been newly diagnosed mm -hmm. to give you some advice and some tips on how to handle everything in the beginning. And so that's what we're going to say. The beginning is almost the hardest part about every diagnosis. So, right. Yeah. Because most people may get a diagnosis and, you know, unless you are a doctor, mm -hmm. you know, you may have never heard. Yeah. When I got Crohn's disease, at first I was like, well, any disease would not be good. But when you get diagnosed and they say, oh, you have Crohn's disease and you're like, well, I've never heard of Crohn's disease before. So what is that? You feel like you've never you've never heard of it before. So it must be rare. Right. Yeah. But yeah. And I think a lot of you like the very first thing that goes to your mind, too, is what changes? What changes? Mm -hmm. How do we fix it? Is it fixable? Is it, you is know, a cure? Right. Mm -hmm. Because if how feels, fast can I cure it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially when you're in an active flare, um, people can be diagnosed at different phases of this disease. And, you know, everyone is different with it. So depending where you're at with it when you're diagnosed, uh, there can be a lot of questions and also urgency to feel better. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, you know, you want to feel better and you want to go. Now. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so you have a diagnosis, you know, and it's like, all right, we have that. So what does that mean? And typically, like for us, it meant a thousand things. It, we met with like, I don't know, six different doctors, different GIs mm -hmm. because you're in the hospital for so long. Yeah. And, and a lot of other people because there were teams that would come in and right. stuff. So what we learned in that is there is not one way to necessarily no. handle this. And it would depend on the doctor. And so that surprised me because I had thought there was probably one way to treat this. And it was like they, they, you know, like they have a a posted sheet mm -hmm. in their break room and the doctor's room with it. Like, this is how to treat it. And everybody yeah. does the same that's, thing. That's not how all. it works. And that isn't how it works. And we also learned that not all GIs, gastroenterologists are, are the same. Uh, are the same. Mm -hmm. And so the the very I think the very first piece of advice I could give is one that was given to us, which we've discussed on here. We have it on t-shirts. It's something we talk about. And it is something that Rolf Benershka had introduced to me yeah. when Mason was diagnosed. In the hospital. He called yeah. you in the hospital and he mm -hmm. said that. Yeah. Thing. He called and he, well, he, he gave me the advice of just not focusing on everything at once, which mm -hmm. is what we were doing because yeah. you're looking at every single aspect like, Okay, if I make this decision, what does it do for this? And then what happens with this? And then it's kind of hard to do when you're newly diagnosed because you're yes. confused and you're interested. Well, not interested, but you want to see what it means for your future. But it's very true. Yeah. And because you do, I mean, you're suddenly learning about some disease you have. So you do become very interested mm -hmm. in like learning all about it. And so the basically the advice is 
take one wave at, at a time. time yeah. You can't take all the waves mm -hmm. and you have to sit, you have to kind of focus. You have to focus on one. Right. And then after you get done with one wave, you can focus on the next right. wave and then the wave after that. You can't do everything at once. It's not to say like you ignore everything. No. That's not it because the doctors will keep you on task yeah. with that. Hopefully they do. But I guess there's, I guess it's more about worry. And so instead of worrying about everything, mm -hmm. let yourself worry about one thing and try to accomplish that in the day and then worry about the next. But worrying about 20 different things At is, once is, is overwhelming. Very stressful. Yeah. And so ideally it's, it's just to kind of focus and that way you're not just going crazy. Yeah. And, <laughs> But are all outcomes. Yeah, because there's a lot. So so that's, I mean, and again, maybe it's easier for some than others, depending on your situation. So don't beat yourself up either. You know, don't get upset if you this doesn't work for you. The one thing is everybody's experience is different. Yeah, everything and, with Crohn's is different. There's there's no, well, there might be if you're really there are lucky. similarities. I mean, there's definitely similarities because you obviously have to diagnose this. But nothing is perfectly. Right. But everyone. Similar. You're, you have your own reactions, your own, you know, triggers. Everything is different. Right. So when we speak on this, we are understanding that some of you listening will not have the same experience we had. Mm -hmm. And so we just want to be very clear when we talk about this. We're just trying to give you ideas from our perspective that may help you. But we also understand that your experience might look different. Yeah. And that's okay, too. And I think the other thing is when the doctor tells you, you know, you have you know, told you and they told me, you know, your son has Crohn's disease. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like we were saying, you have all these questions that pop in your head and well, what is Crohn's disease, obviously. Right. I mean, the first. Yes. And it's like, so what is it? What, what does it cause? What does it do? And then it leads to all of a sudden, wait, can we fix this? This, is this something that can be cured? And I think you slowly start to spiral when you hear that. No, it can't be cured. Mm -hmm. It's permanent. When I was first diagnosed, I expect it so eventually there will be a cure well obviously there will be a cure someday probably in the future mm -hmm. eventually but i thought by now we probably had a cure for it so i was like okay and, and i asked the doctor i was like so when do i when am i cured like when is remission when will i stop having to take things and she's like there is there is no cure Right. And I was like, oh, OK. I mean, that was a really hard. Yeah, day. That was a really hard day because I thought it was just like, oh, this is just for a year or two and then mm -hmm. you're done with it. No, it's, it's uh, for life. Right. But then it's different for everyone. So, yeah. And as it is right now with biologics, there's a lot of people who think when they do feel better, they can come off of them. But the thing mm -hmm. is, it's not curing the no. disease. It's treating it's it. It's treating it. It's like right. putting a Band-Aid on a cut. It's going to help it heal, mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's not going to make it go away. Right. That's your body, right? It's not the your Band-Aid. Body, your body is the one right. that's going to The Band-Aid's assisting, yeah. but it's not the actual one doing the healing. The Band-Aid's so, stopping it from getting worse, like from infection. Yeah. And so that's with biologics. That's basically how they presented it to us, which which is another reason why parents panic, because you feel like I have to make a decision like and then it's and maybe sometimes doctors give too many decisions, but I think they try to give you options. Mm -hmm. And I think, though, at first, that's what's overwhelming because you feel like, no, no, I want you to tell me the magic yeah. potion what's here. The magic, what's yeah. the magic cure? What's the magic treatment? Yeah. Like, I want you to tell me that and instead of like saying, well, here's the options. And what do you think? Because it's like, I don't know what to think. I, yeah, I, I've, I haven't been in this field before. Yeah. And so, but I mean, obviously they're there to help you, but these are just reactions at first. I know now that I'm very comfortable talking to your doctor. You're very comfortable yes. talking to her. And, but in the beginning, we didn't have a doctor selected yet because we were, he was still impatient. And once we finally got a doctor that we knew was going to be his, it made it easier to discuss the treatment plans. And you weren't switching no. every week. Right. And, it, and you had to, you didn't have to tell the doctors, well, this is what was going on. I think last yeah. week. Right. It was like you get to know them and they get to know you. And now she mm. knows Mason extremely well yes. and understands his triggers, understands his stress. She's very cognizant of all of that. And, you know, because one of the other doctors had suggested surgery potentially. And so I'm just thankful that I mean, in surgery would not have been a bad thing if that was necessary. Mm -hmm. But his doctor that we ended up with went a different route. So you can mm -hmm. see, I mean, right there, there's different 
you know, different ways that it could have been treated from the start. And even with surgery, though, Mason still would have needed biologics. Um, so surgery is not a cure because right. unless you have ulcerative well, colitis, yeah, for ulcerative colitis, it's like it's, a cure. I don't yeah. want to say because the disease it, remains and it's it's yeah, still there, the but you can there. remove one of the biggest problems mm-hmm. when you have ulcerative colitis. But it's so hard for ulcerative colitis, right? But with Crohn's, with Crohn's disease, you take out um the a parv intestine, whatever is yeah, your colon, the and, and then it that. just comes back somewhere else. So it's, right. Not going to get rid right. of it. So you can't just use surgery as a way to treat it and think it's going to be gone. You can use it as a way to help with current problems. And mm-hmm. sometimes you do have to have surgery. But you, it's important you have a maintenance drug that keeps it from causing yeah, inflammation and getting worse again. And and I, some of you listening are maybe not doing the biologics route. And that's, you know, that's something you can discuss with your own doctor. Again, we're basing it off of Make our experience. Sure whenever you do something, just ask your doctor. Yes. And so that's, and actually that's something I want to talk about later. And so I hope I, I don't want to forget that because that's important. I will remind you. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. you. We have some notes here, but we're kind of like, we're, we don't really have a script or anything today. We're just kind of talking. Just chilling. Yeah. And so the other thing is, like we said earlier, not all GIs are equal. <laughs> and some which I had no idea about this either. I thought when they were bringing in gastroenterologists and GIs to work on Mason, like they all all had Crohn's disease. Like they all were specialists. Found out that's not always true. So some of you listening, check with your GI and ask if they are IBD specialists. That's very important too. Mm -hmm. Um, Depending at the hospital though, I know some people may not have as many options and you may not have someone who has that specialty in IBD We are in San Diego, so we have access to a lot of different, I mean, for him, he's at the pediatric level still, but pretty soon we'll have access to a multitude of great places he can be treated at. And we can have the luxury of making sure we know now to get an IBD specialist because that's not everyone is a specialist just because they're a GI. And mm-hmm. so a lot of us, you don't know to ask those questions. You have no idea yeah. when, when they're first diagnosed. You don't know no. what to ask, really. Because I remember when we had chosen Dr. B, Nurse Robin had come in. Yeah. And this was when we first met her. And she is the like the point person that helps everybody. She was her at her time. It, at that time, she was the nurse that worked with Dr. B. And when she came in to talk with us about everything, and I remember her mentioning like, you know, you're in good hands because she her specialty is actually IBD. And I was like. Aren't they all? <laughs> so like, wait, that's news to me. And yeah, so, they all be specialists. Yeah. And I mean, it's not to say GIs are not qualified. That's no, not what we're no. saying. But you're going to, when you have someone who's IBD special, is, is their specialty, you're going to be in really good hands. Yes. And so that was like, oh, so just, just FYI for all of you out there listening. And I think the other thing is when you're diagnosed, kind of like we're saying, when they say you have Crohn's disease, you're like, what's that? Mm. You feel like all of a sudden you need to understand this disease in like 20 minutes. (laughs) And it's like, you know, and that takes a lot more than 20 minutes. Mm. Like it's been four years. For four years. Four years since I was diagnosed. And we're still learning. Yeah. about this disease and that's because science is still mm-hmm. learning there's still discoveries happening and it, it's not like obviously there's not a care for it right so it's not that new uh they don't know what treatments will work for people because it's different for everyone right um so eventually they'll they might find ways to figure things out like that mm-hmm. it's very difficult to pinpoint what causes this disease there is really no cause right it's right now i mean obviously there's something mm-hmm. but we none of us know and that's why there's foundations like the crohn's and colitis foundation why there are a lot of mm-hmm. science and companies that research this and foundations because everyone wants to understand it because obviously we w- yeah you'd be able to yeah. help so many if you were able to better understand this. And so there's, I mean, there's an understanding it's an autoimmune disease because your immune system is fighting your body, but it's like, there's many different ways it can do this. And many different, you know, it's, it's not as simple as just like you have one immune cell in your body and that's not how it works. So, so I think it's like when you, when you're first diagnosed, it was like, I want to know everything I can. And yeah, it's a help. Yeah. And then it's like, then you had to your computer and you start to Google. 
And, and then Google's like, well, that's not good yeah. for you. And so it's like, so I relied on the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation for a lot of my information because I know it is a good source, a good source. Right. It was better than, you know, sometimes you find like threads where people are talking about stuff and it's like, what? Like, oh, I found all I'm of it. ready for that. And and also, like, I think you are trying to feel like what caused it? Mm -hmm. How what was the cause? Right. Because it's like, that was one of my questions. Like, what happened? Why did Mason get this? I assume it's, I'm no scientist. I'm no yeah. scientist at no. all. You have taken lab yeah. biochemistry. I have taken lab biochemistry. Yeah. But I You're assume, almost certified. Yeah, I'm all, <laughs> almost. He's not. No, I'm not. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> but I would assume it's something to do with genetics. And it's partial. So partially, I think they say like 15% of cases are genetics. Mm -hmm. um, well, 15%. genetically passed down. But your genes do play a role yes. in this. Yes. So because a lot of people, I think that's that's where it's confusing. They think genetics. You hear that. It's like. Oh, so that means, but genetics are also different. It doesn't always mean that you got it from somebody or you're a, a person doesn't have to have it. No. Um, but it's very interesting because we've actually, we've done the gene studies, which we've talked about on here with Mason to see if there's anything. And there wasn't, um, in his case, some people do find certain indicators. Interesting. Right. So that's interesting too. It's like, wouldn't they all have the exact same, yeah. but, but there's a lot of genes, a lot of mutations, a lot of variations that can happen. And so, yeah, so it's, it's a lot. Like she said, like, wouldn't you expect to see some of the same genes in all of the Crohn's patients? Right. Like, cause he said that eventually they might have different types of Crohn's disease. Yeah, like that's what we talked type about. Type A Crohn's or type B, because yeah, they they're all so different. Some people are affected by food. Some people aren't. Mm -hmm. Some people can take Remicade. Other people like me, it Remicade didn't work. work. Right. And some people need dual biologics. Some people only need one. Right. And it's just so different. It is. You'd think that at one point there'll be different branches for yeah. different. We've had a discussion in our house a lot because. When I do hear people say like, oh, you just adjust your diet. I'm like, that works for you. But wow. and then I'm thinking, are you sure you have Crohn's disease? Yeah, can... If you can do that. Um, but then it's like, well, no, they've been tested and diagnosed, too. And so there has to be to me, there's got to be different. I mean, there may they may ultimately find the cause, but there's got to be different ways it affects people or different sources of how the body does this. Because he's going on a diet or. Something like that is not going to help me. No. But if someone else has managed to do that, that is so different from me. Right. It has to be a different kind. That's why we sometimes, I mean, we again, we don't know for sure. We don't know this, for this sure. Our but it's, our, we, it's, it's our theory. It's our theory. Our conversations over dinner yes. sometimes. And so. They're very fun. Yeah. And <laughs> it's it because like with Mason, you know, he's, the biologics have helped him and the, but the first one did not. Um, yeah. Methotrexate did not. Uh, other people like us. Uh, it's 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 obvious that you all a lot of you suffer from the same symptoms and same problems with this. But it's amazing to me how some people can do things differently. So, but for us, uh, we found a GI that we trusted mm -hmm. completely, and it's hard to do that. And I know, like, because as as a patient, as a parent, um you know, you're listening to this, this person speak on it. That is like, they're unsure of what caused it, but we're going to try this. And they're yeah. very honest about it. And you're thinking, Oh my God, well, if you don't know what's going to work for it. How? Yeah. So you, know. you just have to trust the process and trust that maybe if, if that, and also not be too freaked out. Like if that biologic didn't work, like we were devastated when we McCade failed mm -hmm. it was like oh my gosh like no this was supposed to work because i've yeah. heard like it works in like 50 so percent of people, people work. Yeah. yeah and i'm like so what now and and so then we went to stellara mm -hmm. and that sort of worked Sta it, but it was it exciting kind of yeah it was exciting because something was happening yeah and so we finally felt like okay and then when they added that second biologic mm -hmm. it was like oh, oh wow okay, okay. Like yeah. this is, that this is it. Good. So, so don't be discouraged, yeah. you know, and, and trust your doctor. And if you feel like your doctor's not giving you good advice, get a second opinion, get a second opinion. Okay. Make sure that you are speaking with your GI and that you have somebody you're trusting. And if you're not, if you, and even if you do trust them, but you're like, I just need that extra reassurance, 
get a second second opinion. opinion. RTI is very clear about that. She's always said that it she's okay with it. Mm -hmm. So we feel very confident that, you know, she's not going to get upset if we need to do that. And that's pretty cool too. So we've already had that conversation. And so, so yeah, so basically, you know, you just want a lot of answers probably at this point, if you're newly diagnosed, even if you've been diagnosed for a while and you're not finding a treatment that works, you're always looking for answers. Yeah. You always want that's what I reassurance. Think. Yeah. Yeah. And you just want, and you want to know, like it really, and, and don't stress yourself out so much as trying to figure out why this happened because science has not figured out your, I mean, science hasn't figured it out. You're most likely not no, going, maybe to. you will figure it out. Hey, and, but it's, it's, I mean, news, but, uh, it's, it's just, we don't want you stressing no. over something that is just the way it is. it is. Once they have it, they have it. And there's no sense in going over and over. I mean, unless you're in research and you do mm-hmm. want to find out. And so, I, I mean, I think it's important to go over diff- the, the symptoms, to go over your history, uh, whatever questions they need to collect. But you as a person, like some people think it's antibiotics. And mm-hmm. I'll see, because I see this all the time, like, oh, maybe it was antibiotics. Oh, maybe it was COVID. And it's like, so maybe something triggered something. Well, I don't know what people think, but people think, or whatever, that stress causes Crohn's. Yeah. But stress doesn't cause Crohn's. Crohn's is simply there. dormant. Yeah, yeah, dormant. dormant is the good word. And stressing out will make the Crohn's... Like active. Active. Mm-hmm. Activate. The symptoms will activate, um, which is a flare. Right. So it's not like, oh my God, I'm really stressed right now. This is yeah. going to cause Crohn's. No, right. you've already had Crohn's the entire time and you're just waking it up. So it's like, don't blame yourself, even if you're thinking, oh, I got so stressed about this and that. And so it you can't cause it. No. And so Crohn's is there. There's all these theories and people have theories on your diet caused it. But it's like, how do you explain the kids? Yeah. Like maybe it did happen to you, but. It's different for everyone. Yeah. So that's the thing. And so we could go like like what we're doing now. You could talk and talk and talk about this and we're not going to arrive at an actual yeah. answer. So just letting you know, um, focus your just focus your time on your if you're the one diagnosed on yourself and healing um, or if you're the parent helping them get through that. But don't worry so much about, you know, was it something they ate? Was it something they took? Mm-hmm. Um, the doctors will ask you those questions. Yeah. But uh, it's it's it's. I think we just get it's it's just a frustrating thing. You can just go around around. I think a lot of people they like want to go a natural route, and I think that's it's like you wish you could just get rid of this by taking a supplement. And which would be nice, but yeah. And I know um... there's and the thing is there are entire businesses built on this this system which are supplements for gut health i mean i see these things all the time i think i'm targeted because obviously we talk about this a lot so i get a lot you know we we've even been approached by a supplement company um offered product for mason to try and of course we're not going to do that uh we're you're only doing something the doctor right he's pediatrics is very different adults it's your own decision and maybe you do want to try it go for it if you have your doctor's blessing on that and you are you know it's something you feel strong about and you've researched but for caregivers with kids we have a lot of different things to consider uh, i don't think a lot of people understand that and so it's it it is very very different but we all wish there was a holistic easier mm-hmm. route for them nobody no shots no infusions no yeah levels. like you didn't want we didn't want that for you and so your mind is immediately like how can i help them so they're not hurting i don't want them to have to go through all that and then you know you just you realize that you just have to again trust in the process and really ask those questions talk to the doctor ask them why are you not just increasing their vitamin d yeah um why can't we you know why are you and it's like well they're going to do that too and so there may be an element of supplements involved and that but that's not going to help it but that's not going to cure it right right so like for mason you did have different vitamins you did have different supplements you did have antibiotics you did have uh, yeah you you had all those different supplements along with your biologics Mm -hmm. but there there are new developments with certain supplements that are looking more promising and so it will be exciting to see what they figure out in the future because this is just like as of right now this is is right now right and they're still making 
Yeah. Yeah. Difference and different developments um, are coming through. So, so yeah, that's why we talk about things because things can change Mm -hmm. and um, our stance may change because there may be a new development that the doctor wants to try and we're going to be on board with that. But, um, and so, and so with that, it's important to look who you talk to for support and for answers. And I think naturally a lot of us look to family, to friends and online now, like social mm-hmm. media is that's one of the you know places I went to the Crohn's and Clives Foundation. I recommend everybody immediately do that. But the other thing is like I joined support groups, which were great yeah. because parents, I, I joined a parents group because I could immediately relate to these parents. But as time has gone on and I've learned more about this, I also realize that a lot of those parents I mean, we're just parents and some of them think that they are medical professionals again, because you feel like you've learned so much Mm -hmm. and so not right. And you're not. And so I do appreciate when a parent can say, here's, here's what we would do, but please talk to your doctor. I Mm -hmm. think that is the most important thing not to say, oh yeah, no, just do this. And I, I can't stand when a parent is is telling someone to do something because it worked for their kid, especially when it could be dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to understand support groups are great for support and you can throw questions out there, but always consult with your own doctor because the doctor is the most important person to consult with. And they're going to know like, you know, what your Mm -hmm. situation is versus someone someone else's. Someone else online overseas or wherever they are isn't going to know about your specific case. Right. It's different for everyone. And just because right. it worked for them doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And when a doctor makes considerations, they're looking at all of your labs, looking at mm-hmm. all of your biopsies, your scopes. They're, they're they've looking seen your at a DNA, different picture. they've seen your blood. Yeah. They you know. know. They and, and physically they have all the pictures, they have everything. So when somebody goes to a support group, I mean, we'll do our best to be mm-hmm. supportive and say, hey, this is what just like we're doing on the podcast. Yeah. But we shouldn't be giving you advice. If your doctor's giving you advice and you're ignoring that and hoping that somebody in the group can give you a better answer, it's not to say like doctors are open to mm-hmm. sometimes to discussing different things. It's not like it's the, you know, but that's the important part is taking that information you've learned and approaching your doctor with it and see what they say, because it, that's, it, it, you just don't want to say like, if someone says, oh, we removed this from our child's diet and you just go ahead and do it talk to the doctor and yeah make sure the doctor is okay with it because they may say oh wait no that's not good because your child's symptoms they don't need that kind of fiber right now Mm -hmm. or with their you know or no we've tested them for celiac we have tested them no there's no gluten restrictions you know you you, and you don't want to start depriving them what if they're iron deficient and you start removing something that has iron in it and you so it's just important that everybody's on the same page so you can understand why if your child starts to flare or start like what happened and Mm -hmm. we also have the food journals yeah might as well plug that here on amazon (laughs) guys not your your average food journal and ibd symptom tracker is Mm -hmm. the name of that and so you guys are get some they're very helpful yeah and we have the same not your average restroom journal and ibd symptom tracker you would take these to your doctor yeah take these to your doctor yes they help with like because when you go to the doctors and you're in a flare or you've gone to a flare the doctor might say well when did you notice things start to happen or well, what have you eat in, in the past few days? Yeah. And I try to remember, I'm like. Yeah, you might. Yeah. So if you're starting, if you're starting to feel things are starting to change, you can start documenting immediately. You and, get down what you ate. Right. And it goes further. It goes into all the other symptoms that could be IBD related. So we didn't just do, it's not just for food. It's for everything. Yeah, it's for so it's a bigger symptoms. picture. And yeah. if you should let your doctor, it would be helpful. So we do have those. So they're and, very nice. Yeah. And, and the other thing, thing I think is kind of funny because not funny but it was like horribly funny I guess is in the hospital you would see the the commercials for these treatments right and so you're watching these commercials and I mean everybody knows like most of the commercial is all the ways it's going to hurt you and it's like oh my gosh and like it's all these scary words right and you're Mm -hmm. thinking like, well, what, why well, would I take that then? Why do I want something else when I've got this? Something else. And, and so, and then, and, and then, then the people in the commercial are dancing. Yeah. The time of their lives. They're boarding the, a yacht. Yeah. They're driving their toilet and their semi truck too. <laughs> yeah. That actually did happen once. Yeah. We're not making that up. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the commercials. You'll see it. In Tibio, I think. Yeah. And then do you have the one where they're, they're in a band and 
they're on stage and they they're like, oh, my stomach hurts. They walk off stage, you know, go, whatever they get there and you come back and they're like, this and they're is happy crazy. and they so feel perfect. They have all this stuff going on to distract you while they're talking about all this, like. Yeah, people in the background are so happy while it's just telling you all the horrible side effects that could happen to you. Yeah. And so I think a lot of us, um, from your perspective, you're like, mm -hmm. hi. Yeah. We, I'm on Remicade and then it, the Remicade com commercial comes on and says, yeah. what's going to happen? You're like, the side effects. And you're like. Yeah. Oh. And so me as a parent, I'm thinking, well, listen. I did everything I could right to get Mason to be like a healthy, you know, like child. We never had to use antibiotics for him. He never had these infections or anything. And so it was like amazing. And now I'm like looking, I'm like, I have to like put this, like allow you guys to put this into his body. And it's, you know, and, and so I think what happens though, is we pay attention to the side effects of treatments, which are, they have to give you every scenario and so the the actual side effects very very small yeah and they can't they can't say there's no side effects right and so if you listen to anything it's going to do that so important to remember like don't freak out too much um it's not like that's gonna happen yeah there's a very small chance of it happening but uh, it's important to know yeah so you can keep an eye right with right those things. and you can come off of things if something is problematic but mm. um but i think what more people do is research the side effects of the treatments than the side effects of an untreated crohn's disease yeah. and a lot of people don't realize so crohn's disease is progressive it gets yeah, worse. it will get worse and worse and worse right. and it can hurt you too you know it can yeah, you could take a chance with biologics or you could take no chance without biologics and let crohn's disease take over and get potentially worse than she will destroy your body mm -hmm. there's no doubt about that and it's so it's it's like i think more people are worried about the treatment and they're not even thinking about what this disease can do mm -hmm. and so yeah the disease can be deadly and it's that's so it's important you can at least try right so there's that balance and then again talk to your doctor with these questions and ours reassured us um it was it was still not an easy decision, but once we saw the effects and how he is so much, it was healthier, much easier. It was easier to say okay. Because when I was on Remicade, nothing was happening, and it was a four hour infusion, and so it's yeah. like, why are we doing this? Right, you feel like but, we're doing all this, and it's yeah. not. And you obviously feel like you're kind of getting better, but if you really look at everything that's happening, you're not. Yeah, you feel like something is happening because you're on it, but when you, when you find something that actually works, mm -hmm. and you are going 15 times a day, now you're going zero or two, yeah, two times. That is such a big difference. You are the decision is clear. You obviously want to take the to help you because you've right. seen what it's like to have to be on it and it right. actually works yeah and so that is the difference so i think those those of you who've never had a biologic it's a difficult jump and once you make that jump though like that's why i said we trust the doctor she kept saying he can be better and i was and like real can. can he though and now we're like yeah okay, he can he can he can. And so I'm glad Doctor we will trusted her. always be right yeah so i'm really glad we trusted her and then um the other thing to understand, I mean, those of you listening, you could be an adult with this. You could be a kid. Yeah. So a caretaker of a kid. Yeah. So you could be any of those things. And but it's important to understand that pediatric Crohn's is not the same as no. adult onset. Not the same. And so you don't have the same luxury. That's why adults, you can try different strategies. But for kids, you have a window of time with your growth, with your bone development and you're, you know, you're trying to grow, put all your growing in. And if you're not getting the nutrients and if you're not able to eat and if it's just, you're not, you're going to end up very, very ill and your bones are going to also end up in very bad shape. Yeah. When you're a kid, you need all the time you can have to grow. Right. So that, that's what they explained to us. That's why a lot of times kids are actually approached with biologics faster than adults might be because they are more aggressive in how they treat children. Because you just, you do have a window of time. It's not like you were 25 when you're diagnosed. Yeah, 30. you don't need to grow. Right. And there's you, things you don't have to grow. worry about. So it's like, if you want to try diet, if you want to try supplements, you know, different routes. But with a kid, it's like, you get just want to get yeah. them under control. 
just get that disease under control. So that's also important. That might help you guys feel better if you have kids with this. And if you're an adult, you can handle it a little differently mm -hmm. if you feel like you want to. And, you know, the other thing that I wanted to mention is people are going to give you advice from like kind of we mentioned in the beginning when we started off with, they're going to give you their own perspective yeah, if absolutely. they've had this disease or if they knew someone. And just knowing someone with this disease is not enough to make you an expert understand because every time we hear like, oh, yeah, my friend did that and they cut out uh, gluten and they have to be really strict, but they're doing great. And it's like you may not know, though that they've had scopes and things don't look good, mm -hmm. you know, or that they are also taking some kind of severe pill. Uh, severe disease currently is. Right. Or if they do take an injection, some people don't talk about it. And so mm -hmm. maybe they do diet changes, but they might be doing something else too. And you just don't see that. And so it's just important to know when people are giving us advice, um, don't let anyone make you feel, you know, upset or bad mm -hmm. or, you know, just don't let it upset you. Just take it as... They're trying to um, they're trying to connect with you. And so they're using the only connection that they might have. Mm -hmm. And it's not like they're trying to hurt you or trying yeah. to it's they're yeah. trying to have conversation with you. So look at it that, OK, they're trying to reach out to me and take that time to educate and talk to them a little bit about, OK, this is what I have. Like, this is mine. And, you know, but just look at it in that sense now if someone is deliberately not being nice and yeah. blaming you then that's, then that's on them yeah. okay <laughs> that is not you and, and that's yeah. why the block button exists on yeah the on, media <laughs> yeah on social media does yeah. help the like we mentioned earlier the crohn's and Clytus foundation is there to support you guys they are doing a lot of research they are funding a lot of research is what they're doing. I'm part of a patient advisory committee right now, and we're working with something that it's very exciting to me to hear the developments that they're trying to do to find out how to like personally identify what you may need to treat this disease. That is really cool. Yeah. That's which, what we need. That is what we need. That personalized attention to the, instead of wasting time with the biologic. Yeah, and you're potentially getting worse and worse and worse. And right. You can go straight yeah, to what to works what you for need. you. So there's different things that are coming about. So progress is being made. And that's really important to know. And maybe like we've done, we've become very active. We speak about it. We post about it all the time. And it's not to just be like annoying with all the pictures, no. annoying, but it's it's to show you like this is living with it. This is what this is our through. life. And you can post all your pictures mm -hmm. of you at the beach this week. You were on a hike and all these things. And you that's know, you. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's you living your life. And so we're just trying to show people from if I could post all the pretty happy pictures that we want on Instagram, but it's more important for me to say, this is our life. Here we are. And if you are like again. living like this, you're not alone. <laughs> right. You're not alone. And it, and it also means life is still good. It can, mm -hmm. it's, that's not, it, that's the thing, but it's important to show like, because you don't have to hide it. It should mm -hmm. be like, this is our life and be, be proud of it. Be like what you're doing and the work you're putting in, share that. Mm -hmm. And so, so yeah, so it's important to, I, I feel like maybe help yourself heal by figuring out how you can help and what you can do. Yeah. I think that is a big, important. big step. Yeah. And also the other, the, I guess this is the last thing I'm going to end on. We could keep going on and on about this. Mm -hmm. So, and we could, you know, you can let us know if there's something else you want us to talk about too, that yeah. we didn't, we didn't get everything today. No. But we're just trying to, if you were newly diagnosed, we just want to have kind of a landing page. Yeah, where, we have new viewers. Yeah, we, we just want, want to make sure we're like, it, we, you're like, mm -hmm. okay, this is updated. So let's let's see if there's anything in here. Data backdrop. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that too. That's what we use when we were, um, we went to the Crohn's Class Foundation. Mm -hmm. We had a booth. And so we had That takes steps walk. Yeah, the yes. take steps walk. We had Very fun. So we decided Very to good. throw that. Which different. if you're new with Crohn's disease, you should definitely go there because it's really fun. Steps. Yeah, it is. And so, yeah, so the last thing is um, try not to compare yourself, like your progress with others, mm -mm. because I think you need to really look at your individual results. Like look at your labs, look at your, see where it makes sure, like compare yourself to yourself and your progress, because it, it is weird. Like people will post things being positive and I think saying like, Look at how good I look now. And that sounds I like it's kind do. of bragging. And it, but, it, but, it's, but it's not. It's not. But it's what it, it feels like when you're in an active flare, 
I mean, some of you may take that as hopeful, like I'm going to get there. And some of you are going to take that as, well, why aren't I there? Why am I not there? And you almost may feel more discouraged. You know, you may feel more frustrated because you aren't making that progress. And it might feel like you are um, regressing instead of progressing like these other people are. And so it's just important to, if you're the kind of person that loves seeing those inspirational posts, and then that is good too. That's great. And that's that's why it is okay to post your results. Like I'm not saying you shouldn't. You definitely should be proud of yourself or your child mm-hmm. and and maybe give hope to others. But if you're the person looking at it and you're feeling discouraged, just remember like that's they're sharing their experience, but focus on your own yeah. progress and you are the most important. Right. And so just try you know, not to compare yourself and to be proud of what you're you doing accomplished. too. Yeah. Cause some people are going to be Olympic swimmers. They're mm-hmm. going to be basketball players. They're going to be, you know, world famous rock stars, yeah. singers, and, and other ones are going to maybe be on disability and struggle to even do anything in a day. And so, disease is different. Right. And so it's just important to remember you know, be kind to everybody with Mm -hmm. this and try to be understanding and just don't be hard on yourself. No. I think that's the the biggest thing. Yeah, that's the moral of today's podcast. (laughs) So on that note, so that's, we'll kind of end it there Mm -hmm. and uh, we can probably talk about more of this in the future. Like I said, I think it's important to return back and kind of do this every so often as we learn more. We learn more and more every every yeah. year and every day. Because every obviously, month. like what's working for us, it's going great now. But you know, we're we like to be real with you guys and share what's going on. I mean, Mason still has his challenges. We mm-hmm. don't always post or share all of it. No. And because day to day, it's like I'm not gonna go do daily updates on yeah. social media for everybody. And that's that's your business. Like that's your private life. Yeah. That's your business. There's certain things you can share to say, hey, look, we're getting another infusion. Hey, look, getting another injection just to show people this is our life. This is what Crohn's looks like. Mm-hmm. That's okay. But there's other things you, you know, you don't always share. So just because somebody does look like they're doing great, you know, just, just be kind and understanding yes, that they choose, may still need that support. Choose kindness. Yeah. So with that, you guys can follow us. If you do want to see some of Mason's journey, we were just talking about mm-hmm. on team IB determined on Instagram. You can also follow the Reggie Project. We're going to hope to get that kind of kicked off a little bit more. We've already announced it, but it's it, we haven't really got to grow that that site yet. And I think that I'm very excited about that. So check out the Reggie Project. Reggie. Reggie's kind of up <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. Up there. there he is. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a, bit, yeah maybe a bit too high, but hey. Oh, I know. He's standing on my head right there. But. Yeah, but join the try join the Reggie Project. Find out what it's about. And, you know, you can participate, too. It's something that's very exciting for us and the other thing is you can listen to us anywhere uh, if you're you might be watching us right now but if you purchase yeah. prefer just to listen you can listen on like spotify iHeartRadio, amazon yeah. music apple podcasts mm-hmm. um all of that and there's more too we'll have a link, link to buzzsprout right which which has we'll show all of, them. all of the links where you can listen mm-hmm. to us speaking of podcasts are now youtube podcasts mm-hmm. uh which if you are on youtube you can hear us on the YouTube podcast. But if you want to watch us as well as hear us, you can go to the normal YouTube videos. Uh, And if you are watching us, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to be notified every time we post a video, uh, hit that bell icon. Yeah, that's basically it, guys. Leave us some comments. comments. Yeah, we love love reading all your comments. Say hi. Uh, You don't even have to have any big news. If you don't want to just say hi, check in. So we'll say hi back. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) say hi. It's it's all friendly in the comments. So thank you guys Mm -hmm. for listening. We hope this was of some value and some help to you guys. And we all hope that you have a good rest of your rest of the day. day, Yeah, day, week. School year. Yeah, all that. Yeah, I know. And we'll see you guys in two weeks. So see you on the next. Yeah, see you guys on the next episode. Bye. Bye. We hope you will stick around, tune in, and reach out to us with your own journeys. We are excited to give you an inside view of what it takes to be a caregiver and what it's like to be a patient. And most of all, We hope you'll maybe be able to play something you hear on here that might help you in your own life. Sometimes life changes, and it's all about how you handle the journey.